This is Chaos Cast, the Chaos Community Podcast, where we share use cases and experiences with measuring open source community help, elevating conversations about metrics, analytics, and software from the Community Health Analytics Open Source Software, or short Chaos Project, to wherever you like to listen. Welcome to this episode. This podcast is sponsored by our friends at Sustain, a community of open source enthusiasts and professionals that care about the future of open source. Learn more at sustainoss.org. On the panel today are Venu. Hi, I'm Venu. I'm from India. I'm working as the Grimoire Lab Community Manager, working on fostering and improving the Grimoire Lab community along with Bitajia and Kios. Welcome. And Shoya. Hi, everyone. I'm Xiaoya. I come from Shanghai, China. And I'm currently doing some of the connection works between Kios and the Chinese community. And Open Source Promotion Plan Program is one of them, which brought us the amazing Sivagan. Awesome. Welcome, Shoya. And myself, Georg Link. Hi, everyone. Good to be back with you again. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska, United States. I work as the director of sales at Biturgia. I'm a co-founder of the Chaos Project, co-lead of the governing board. And yeah, I organize a lot of the podcast episodes. So welcome. Great to be back with you. And sure, you already mentioned that today's episode, we have a special guest with us. Sivagen, who worked with us on the Summer of Open Source Promotion Plan. And so, welcome, Sivagen. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Hi there, everyone. Thank you for having me. My name is Sivagen. I'm a final year student from Amrita Vishwavidipedan, Amrita Buri Campus. I've been selected to contribute to the Wimolab project through the summer open source promotion plan. And my project was to restyle and uh, revamp the Wimolab tutorial. On a side note, I come from Mauritius and I have an interest towards web related technologies. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you with us. Maybe a question that we should answer is what is the summer of open source promotion plan? Because I personally have never heard of this before, before this year. And so what is that? So the open source promotion plan is indeed a quite young program. This year is the second year of this program and is initiated by a Chinese academic institution named the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Open Euro community. The program aims to cultivate and explore more outstanding developers. Actually, it's very similar to the Google Summer of Code program to connect students and the open source communities. And the applicants are also restricted to students. And the period is three months. Awesome. So it's a program similar to Google Summer of Code for three months for students to get involved in open source. Yes, correct. Awesome. If I remember correctly, you were the one who found this program and suggested that Chaos becomes involved in that. Do I remember that right? Yes. We talked about this program on one of the Asia Pacific meeting because the program was quite hard in China and is also open for communities and students globally. So we all agreed to participate in it as one of the open source project. Then I submitted the application. Excellent. So what about the project that Sivagen did? How did that come to be? What was the goal of this project? The project Sivagen worked on was more or less on revamping the Grimor Lab tutorial. So the Grimoire Lab tutorial was quite outdated and it was written a few years back. Now many components have evolved and you know many things have changed uh, in the way they work. 
So we were looking to revamp the whole tutorial and rewrite it with the new components included and, and the latest updates and everything. So we were thinking, how do we do it? And then we saw this program as a beautiful opportunity where we can have one student dedicated to work on this particular project for complete three months. He or she can successfully complete the project so that you know we have a good tutorial for the model. I'm personally very invested in that as well because I think the Grimoire Lab, what we've heard time and time again is that sometimes it's hard to get started with. And so having a really good tutorial or documentation to work on that was something that, yeah, I thought we always needed. So really happy that this came about. So Sivagan, what about your experience? How did you hear about the summer of open source promotion plan? And how did you become involved and decide to work with Chaos? So it started with Google Summer of Code. I tried going with Google Summer of Code for this year, um, 2021. In January, I was contributing to the Grimoire Lab project and I was applying for the project related to the sorting hat of Grimoire Lab, which was to add the open ID support for authentication and authorization. Unfortunately, I was not selected for this particular project. But even so, I decided to keep contributing to Grimoire Lab. And one particular day, I saw a tweet on Twitter from Chaos, which was about this program, which I had no idea about, which was some OSPP. So I decided to check it out and things just happened. And I decided to apply to the project that was there, which was revamping and restarting the Grimoire Lab tutorial, which I had referred to during the time I was contributing to Grimoire Lab. And I did find it was a bit difficult to get around it. So this project did strike me personally, and I decided to apply for this particular one. So say again, what was your initial understanding about the project? I mean, you know, whenever you read about first time, what was your understanding? I mean, you might have gone through it, right? The project and then, you know, you have read throughout it. And then, so, so explain those steps. What did you do to understand more about the tutorial? So when I first saw the project title, which was revamping and restarting the tutorial, I knew what I had to do because I did go through the original tutorial, which, which was, I won't say old, but uh, the content was a bit outdated and the template that was used looked a bit out of date. So from what I understand from the title is that the whole tutorial would have to be redone with some new kind of styling, some revamped content which I thought was basically to take the initial content, rephrase it and use the same thing, but it did not go that way. So the project went on with completely rewriting the first portion of the sorting hat component, which was not planned, did not go according to the time frame, because sorting hat was currently being uh, revamped into this new web application. So all content, all documentation about sorting head was deprecated. So we had to make new ones. So based on this, it was urgent. And we went on with this before going on with the rest of the tutorial. So this is how the program went. And yeah, this is how it, it went on. That's really great. And have you stuck into some trials or tribulations? And in what ways did the community help you? We've had two major difficulties for the project. The first difficulty was with the sorting hat section of the tutorial. So sorting hat had a pretty big code base. So documenting each part of it would be pretty difficult. Plus, we decided to go with a user-oriented tutorial, which would not align with what we decided beforehand. So we went on with 
something called Sphinx, which was an automatic document generator made in Python, which was actually developed back in 2008, which makes it pretty old. And the steps to use it were a bit long, did not really make much sense to me. So I had to take a week to try them out and see exactly what each one of them did and was it aligning with what we we wanted for the tutorial. So it took me some time to get used to the commands that I needed to execute to get the actual documentation for sorting head. But after approximately one and a half week, I got it working. So right now the developer oriented documentation is available for sorting head and we have the user oriented documentation as well for it. The second problem which we faced was to test out the tutorial. So after gathering all this content, we needed some way to test it out because we did not, even though the content is there, we can't be sure how effective it's going to be without testing it. So during one of our weekly meetings, we then and Jo put out an idea, which is to contact community members, people from the community and people who knew about Remore Lab and people who do not know anything about Remore Lab to test out how the tutorial worked out for um, any one of them. So I had to personally contact those people, schedule a meeting, make sure that they would be free for that time frame, then ask the right questions so that I, I can get the right feedback for the tutorial and finally implement those suggestions from the volunteers. So this is the first time I did this kind of work. I'm usually more into acting out the tutorial. So it was, I won't say difficult, but it was unique in the way that I had to, to interact with the community. I do want to say that I'm very happy with how that turned out because the way the tutorial that you wrote the tutorial was for users to use Grimoire Lab. And so going out to actually ask, hey, can you go and figure out how to use Grimoire Lab using the tutorial as guideposts? I think that was really a great step to do. And Shoya, I think you even participated in that. Can you maybe share what that experience was like as someone who participated in this? The process was to reviewing the tutorial and I suppose the idea was to see if anyone who has little knowledge of the project Grimoire Lab, especially how to use the dashboard, could get on well with it easily. So Sabagon gave me two to three small tasks and to see how I can conduct those tasks with the help of the tutorial. And it's very interesting experience because I've conducted similar tests before. That was the task of my user interactive interface design course, but it's a completely new perspective coming to the role of the user. And the tutorial was really excellent work, I'd say. Getting the review of the actual users is actually a pretty great idea because after these regular reviews, we had a lot of improvements in the documentation, which are like, you know, very basic, like, you know, missing links or else, you know, adding a contributing doc, etc. So that was actually a great idea. And I also remember the time when I was participating in Google Season of Doc program, when I was writing the documentation of Kiel's DI badging project. And the feedback from some users can really help a lot. And as Savagun, you have already mentioned a bit actually, but could you talk a bit more about mentors help you? My mentors were Venu and Georg. So we've been having weekly meetings every Friday ever since the program started. So initially they helped me getting a, to wrap my head around the actual goal of the project. I was not sure whether we were going for a user-oriented documentation or a developer-oriented documentation. And through the meetings we've had, we were able to determine that 
the goal for this project was definitely for the users and tiny section of it was for the developers. So throughout the program, they helped me getting understanding what exactly I had to write. And they gave me feedback on the actual documentation when it came to the content of it, including the screenshots, the steps in performing certain actions and feedback on how to actually frame it in such a way that it makes it really easy to understand from the point of view of a user. So if it was just to me that by now, the tutorial would be a mix of user-oriented plus developer-oriented documentation. But my mentors helped me keep track of the goal of this project, which is developing documentation and user guides for the users of Primo Lab. And they did help me to stick on to this particular goal till the end of the program. While open source software today is powering critical infrastructure, the open source ecosystem as a whole is rapidly changing, facing challenges for governance, maintenance, maintainer burnout, funding, marketing, and more. Are you concerned about these things for your open source software too? Well, in the Sustain community, we discuss these challenges and share solutions for how to sustain open source in the long haul. We meet once per year in person, and the rest of the time we keep the fire burning in our discourse forum. Join our conversations at sustainoss.org and sustain OSS on Twitter. So what's the current status of the tutorial and are there any next steps that are still to follow? So the tutorial is currently completed, but we still need to merge it with the upstream. So I need to send pull requests to merge the tutorial with the Grimo Lab repo. So right now, all the work can be found on the Deserac branch of the Grimo Lab tutorial. This branch contains all the BRs which I've made currently to add the content of the tutorial onto the main branch. So the Deserac branch right now is the most updated one. And around 60 to 70% of the new tutorial is already merged there. So the rest, 30% that will be added in the next few weeks, sections such as the understanding community health section that needs to be merged. The dashboard navigation section, part of it is merged, but part of it needs to be reworked on. Then we have the sorting hat user guides which I need to make the PR for it. Those sections are completed. So that is the status of the project right now. And the next step would be once we have everything merged, I think we can actually deploy the actual tutorial onto the read the docs URL, which the old tutorial is using, I think. Either it's using GitHub pages or read the docs. But once we have all of the PRs merged and reviewed, we can deploy it onto the actual link. And once that's done, I think I'll be sticking around. I'll be looking into any kind of tiny stuff we might have missed. I know there are some stuff we might have missed in there. So I might need to look into those and fix those. And I'll stay around the project. Well, I really want to say thank you for all of the work you have done on the tutorial for Grimoire Lab. And really, thank you also for sticking around after the program. I know it already ended and you're still super engaged in bringing this to completion and fruition. It's really amazing. So outside of the work that you're doing here with the program and with Chaos, what are your future plans? Where are you going next? Are you graduating, looking for work? What's your future plans? Like, what do you want to do? I'll be graduating next year in July and right after I graduate, I plan to start working. I'm not planning to go for the master's at the moment. So I plan to gain some experience through work first and then maybe in the next few years try for, for a master's. I've already done a few part-time jobs related to web-related technologies. I was interning at a company a few months ago, which is a startup. So yeah, I plan to gain some experience through actual work, either through startups or established companies. 
understand how this whole ecosystem of working around freelancing uh, works out. And then if the time works out, I'll probably go for NMS in, in the next few years, but not right now. That's great to hear, Sevgen. So do you think this project helped you in any way for your next job opportunities or, you know, your master's program? During this program, I've learned a lot of skills which I did not look into before. So previously, I was very much involved into improving my technical skills, mostly related to coding. I did not really look into how to write any kind of documentation for any kind of project, how to interact with people to get feedback on any kind of project. I did not pay attention to those skills because I did not feel like I was going to use them afterwards. But after this program, I feel like I've learned a lot and I definitely feel that those skills are going to be useful for me in whatever field or whatever work I'm going to do. And in a sense, I've discovered a new side to what the life of a computer science graduate might be. It's not strictly about coding. It's not strictly about knowing some kind of library or framework, but it's mostly about interacting with people, making sure that people can actually use your product through a good tutorial, a good user guide for that particular project. So it's, it's one side which I do not regret learning and participating in because of this project. Yes, sir. Okay. That's really nice. I had mentorship experience last year and it really helped in my first job and it was a great. This is really great. Thank you for sharing all of your experience and your insights from having been part of this program over the last three months. I have a feeling that we can expect some great things from you in the future. So if people want to stay up to date on what you're up to and follow your work, where can they find you online or connect with you? So available on Twitter, you can find me through the handle Sevagen V. And I'm also there on LinkedIn. It's my full name, Verasami Sevagen. Or you can connect to me through email, which is sevagenv at gmail.com. All right. We put those in the show notes. And we always like to wrap up our episodes with a round of value ads where we share something that has brought value, joy, or meaning to our life. And I'm going to start us off. Last time I talked about rereading Aragon. I finished that. And I finally know how the series ends. And now I am reading Init Blyton. That's the author. Uh, Famous Five. The Famous Five, it's stories of young teenagers, four of them, and a dog who makes up the fifth in their group, who have adventures. And the stories are from like 1945. So at the end of the Second World War, and they play in England. And it's just really nice stories about friendship and about exploring and having adventures together and as a kid, I loved the stories and I really enjoy going back and rereading them right now. Oh, well, my pick is also a bit child oriented is the Disney animation Tangled. And I just finished it recently and it's not the cringy princess story as I imagined before, but it was surprisingly great. And I love the scene when all those lanterns light up gradually. And I also love the song. My pick for the episode would be Open Search. It is a community driven open source search and analytics suite derived from Apache 2.0 licensed Elasticsearch and Kibana software. We are making plans to integrate this with Grimoire Lab in the nearby future. So, my pick is something which I think is one of the most important decision I've made during my initial college years. So it is about the Amphos Club 
which is a student community based on campus, my college. And it's basically a club where a group of students from the college itself, we go and join at the end of the day of the classes and we look into open source projects, any kind of field which we might be interested into. We try out hackathons together. We do a lot of fun stuff together, not just technical. So I hold this club. I think this club is very important to me because I would not be into open source would it not be for this student club and especially because of the mentor that we've had at the club, which is Ipin So. So without him, I would not be doing any kind of open source work. I would not even be applying to any kind of open source related work and not to this program, obviously, if it was not for Amphos. So, so yeah, this is my pick for this session. That's quite powerful. It's sometimes amazing how we pick up a hobby or something alongside of our main studies or work, and then it turns into something even greater because we discover a whole new world and we get so enticed in it, so excited about it. That's really awesome. It is time to say thank you. So thank you, Sevagen, for joining us today and sharing all of your experience and thoughts on this mentor program that you participate in. Thank you, everyone. It was really great. This is actually my first podcast, but it went well. So thank you very much for having me. And I hope to see everyone again soon. Yeah, our pleasure. And thank you, Venu and Shoya, for joining us as panelists on this episode. And Venu, of course, also thank you for being a mentor. Thanks, uh, Thanks, Jörg. Thanks, again. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone. It's an interesting time talking with you guys. And thank you, dear listener, for joining us today. To stay up to date on future episodes, subscribe for free to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Share this podcast with your friends and colleagues. If you have ideas for future episode topics or would even like to come on as a guest, please email us podcast at chaos.community. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, your chaos community.